Hello everyone! For those of you who saw my IGTV live tutorial on chicken wire rolls last week or have seen my quick tips tutorial posted today on YouTube, I wanted to show you some key points on how to get the most out of flowering your designs using these mechanics. Designing in chicken wire roll mechanics is efficient and quick. It allows you to use the amount of flowers that you've gathered together without the extra additional insertions to cover your mechanics. Economy of means, that is. It gives you control and prevents overstuffing, which makes it profitable. And of course, it's no foam, so it's more sustainable mechanics with reuse option. So now I'm going to share with you how to actually flower this particular container that has a chicken wire roll mechanic. So this is what we created in, uh, in the former demonstration. And so we're going to start out by actually just bringing this, this up a little bit so, so that we can actually start out with greening with some boxwood. So we're going to start out by inserting some of this boxwood. These are just cut out of the garden. So you may have some other greenery that's more on the ready to have that's available, that's inexpensive, that you can use just little clippings. They don't have to be fantastic pieces. They could be just odds and ends. And that's what makes it just so much better to use just uh, whatever that's available. So I'm going to just start with that first so that it has a little bit of greening on it. And then also at the same time, what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> use the Middleino extender. I chose this apple green color because I like it really well. It blends in beautifully. And so what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna use this in this mechanic to create a little bit of a, a silhouette of what I want in this particular design. So I'm gonna slip this in underneath so that it goes in it. And then I'm going to actually attach this with a few bind wire that I already have cut up. So I'm just gonna attach this on this side, the middle you know, extender to the chicken wire roll. And then maybe I'm going to bring this out a little bit so that it has the ability to sort of flare out. And maybe bring that forward on that side. This is just pliable, so we can just play with it as we need to. But on this side, I want to bring this out again, also on this side a little bit more. And bring this up so that it has a little bit more height. This is a nice thing about this Middleino extender is that it's possible to still move them about as we, as we need to and to create the feel, the shape that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off, those excess bind wire so it stays right there in place and then I have to deal with clipping them off later. Okay, so this is what I have. Maybe this is gonna go a little higher still. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is actually fill this with water. So I would say it's about, it's almost full. There we go. And then I'm going to slip this stick in again across. Whoops. So that it doesn't slip down as we insert our stems into this design. So I'm just gonna lay that across and push this down so it's suspended over that. So a lot of it's greened in. I'm going to take a few more pieces of boxwood and just sort of insert it 
in a few spots to just give it a little extra quick green. Okay, so we're gonna start out with uh, maybe starting with a little bit of greenery in advance. And I'm gonna start with the Angel Wing Dusty Miller. With these ones, I can use it as a cluster or I could also use it just as individual foliage. So I'm gonna use the two different versions. So I'm going to slip this in so that sort of sinks in like this. I'm gonna pretty much work with it towards one side. So you can see it like that. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of agonis. So we're gonna green it up first. So quick greening and staging to allow for flowering, to create the visual flow and define the sort of the fluid curvilinear shape that I really desire in this particular design. And then I'm going to use, uh, actually, this is sort of interesting because what I wanna do is create this sort of beautiful curvilinear flow. So I wanna use the Middleino extender as a sort of a attach point to put in, actually, these are actually blackberry vine. It's native to here, this, this particular variety. And this way I can sort of bring this in and allow it to just sort of stick into place. That's, that's the beauty of it is that it would stay in place because of its little spine that it has so that it actually can float and attach into this little cradle something like that. And you know, that's one of the wonderful thing about the way it's been here, you know, being at home and, and looking at all the material that we have available and actually thinking of using some of these things, invasives that we normally don't even think about to design with and see if in fact it has a place in some of these design work. So you can see that it has a beautiful curvilinear flow. Um, I'm gonna also use, oh, wait a minute. And then we have, actually, I never thought I would ever use this actually. This is actually blackberry blossoms as they come. And you can see all the, the real heavy thorns. And with this, I'm going to insert this into a spot here. These are just really sharp, so I'm just kind of trying to watch how this, this works. But you can see how, how this looks. It looks really actually rather stunning. And my thought was with these thorns, it may catch some of the stems that you put in later. So that's, that, that was sort of my thinking in getting these in here so that it functions as an opportunity so now I'm going to a little bit of pelagonium, which is out of my garden, uh, the scented geranium. And I'm going to insert that on one side. You can see that. And then I have really kind of a real cool piece that I cut, this one here which has a beautiful shape that I'm gonna kind of twist around and use it this way. So it gives us a little bit of height over on this one side. So you can see that the greening allows the shaping of this particular design. I am also going to use this, this ocean spray, which is very abundant. I'm using it because I actually did have an opportunity to use it when it was sort of pure, like light cream. It's now, and really for the rest of the year, it stays on the trees 
and they turn just sort of soft beige and then to brown and they just stay on. So they could be used basically throughout the year in, in its whatever color capacity. Um, I'm going to use some of these because I think they're actually quite lovely. You can see that this may bring this design out. And this is not actually greens, but it's just forage material. And I just wanted to show how that actually would work. Also going to use, um, this is still part of the greening. Also going to use this um, wild honeysuckle. So the beauty of actually this, this form of mechanic in kind of the rectangular container is that it sets up for what is vegetative designing. Vegetative designing is where there's multiple binding points and the beauty of chicken wire roll for vegetative design looks makes it possible for really to portray the natural way the things actually grow. Meaning that not everything is coming out of one binding point like the base, like a radial design. It could be multiple radial binding points so that it emulates the way things are growing outside. So you have some things growing from this area here, some things are growing from this area, and they're all being radial and intersecting and in, in, intermingling with each other. That's what makes it actually very beautiful. So I'm gonna start now with the flowering and greening, and I'm gonna start out with a little bit of fountain grass, because fountain grass, just in general, grow kind of in a cluster. So maybe I'm going to work with it just radiating in one area. But right away, it sets the tone for this design to look very, very gardeny, wild, almost a little bit of an invasive, uh, weedy look to it, which I think is, is kind of the way I feel when I'm at home and looking out in the garden that some of the area that's been actually cultivated looks very nice, but some of the less cultured area where things are growing just wild looks equally enticing. And I want to sort of emulate the spirit of that area, the weedy parts, as well as the other. And then I'm gonna take this great sprig of eryngium and I'm going to also let that get sort of wild. I'm going to try to make the whole design to be sort of somewhat framed into this so that I'm not going to go too tall. And I have to determine ahead of time what my intent is. So what I want to do is just create sort of this world of beautiful mixture, combination of things that grow in the garden, sort of intermingled, sort of wildly. So I'm designing these little short eryngium into this corner so that I'm creating some depth with it as well. And you can see that right there. And then over on the back side as well. And some of these little taller pieces may emerge from the back, but it gives you that, that really pretty wild look. And then, so I'm gonna sort of work with some of the taller elements, maybe a little bit of astrantia. So those may go into this back area slot that in in between so it stays in place. That's the beauty of some of the sort of the network of stems that are starting to cross each other in the, the base mechanic of the chicken wire. So I have something like this over on that side and I'm going to embellish that a little bit also on the back side. The spirit of the wild garden almost looks like it's, it's, it's there already. 
And I could actually put a stop to it right here and say, oh my God, that's, that's really quite lovely just in itself. And it's got a lot of depth, as you can see, when you look at it from the side, it's got great depth so that creating that little natural micro world, world is still already happening. But I have some beautiful dahlias that I thought were just so stunning right here that I wanted to use into this design. You can see that I'm not designing into, into the middle um, as you might often do in a container and radiate up from there. I'm actually designing into the cluster to, to my left and a little bit off center to the middle and then a cl cluster to, to the right. So I'm kind of designing it in that manner. And I'm gonna actually go to the back side with this dahlia, a little bit shorter because that side tend to be really the high side and this side is gonna be a little bit more of the low side. So I'm gonna go ahead and help counterbalance that designing on the one side with Dahlia with the one on the other. Then I'm gonna use some peony. This is gonna be really nothing more than a botanical collection of cool things that might happen in a garden. So you can see that just those pairing there looks fantastic. And then I'm going to actually also counterbalance with the peony on this side as well. So maybe it's something like this. And it's got that little bit of a dip through the middle that I'm gonna go ahead and use Germany or miniature Gerbera. Love the color. But now I'm gonna use a little bit of amnesia roses. Actually, before I do that, I think I'm gonna to go to the ranunculus. Oh my gosh. So these are gorgeous peach ranunculus that I wanna feature over on this side. A little bit taller and let their heads do its thing. Some of these with a beautiful side, side buds coming out. You wanna use it so that you can see it just sort of growing towards you. Even though it's a very narrow planter kind of container, that doesn't mean that you don't design coming forward. In fact, it's really an essential uh, part of designing to have the flowers coming out of that narrow and outward. I think that's really, really important. So you can see that happening there. And I wanna work with that also to the back side. as well. Okay, and then we're gonna go to Amnesia Roses. They're so beautiful. The color is just, the smokiness is just incredibly beautiful. So I'm gonna use that. So really, I'm not really trying to develop a a focal emphasis area. I'm just you, designing it like they're just like grouping of just beautiful botanicals that I'm saying, oh, please look. Please look at how beautiful these are. That's, that's really the purpose of the way I'm designing this is to showcase the beauty of the contrasting textures, the beautiful blending of color, highlighting how beautiful, the material interact with each other. So you can see how that looks on the back side and on the front side, because I use the um, amnesia roses to my right side. And you'll see this in a minute when I flip it around. I want to use this color carnation instead that sort of the smoky purpley over to collaborate with the beauty of the, of the Germany and also in that, that purple color. And then anchor the right-hand side of the ranunculus with some of these beautiful peachy beige. 
I can see that we can use a little bit of this ocean spray on this other side. I want to see that a little bit higher. So you can see that the whole design is very transparent, that it doesn't feel so full that you can't see air. I think air is really be a very important component today. I think the whole idea of transparency is a very important concept to showcase. And uh, so I, I wanna make sure that I design that way as well to, to show how beautiful material is without overcrowding. Um, I like that kind of a look. So as I complete this design, the key thing is really trying to develop good depth so that even though it's just a skinny container with just a chicken wire roll that basically when you design into it becomes just a vertical design that's really skinny, but it doesn't appear that way when you design it dimensionally. So don't forget to develop depth side to side so that it's nice and full side to side as well from front to back. And you can see that front to back by looking at it from the side, it's fully developed dimensionality. And a lot of times when I use material like this holodiscus or the ocean spray, it flows from front, this side, to the back on the back side. So it has a very diagonal flow front to back that helps develop the depth so beautifully. What we really want is to build a world, like a little microcosm that has all this beauty surrounding you. And so that's why you want this world to have a great deal of depth. So, so important visually, something that you feel like you can just walk into and see all the beauty that's been created from all sides. And as you can see, that aside from the initial greening, which was really more to set up the parameter of the shaping uh, of this design in the sort of a curvilinear flow, sort of Art Nouveau kind of a feel with a lot of tendrils and, and vines to give you that kind of a world. Other than that, I just inserted flowers into it. And honestly, I don't see any exposure or mechanics at all. So unlike with foam, I think this is one of the best way with the chicken wire kind of mechanic is that it disappears quickly as you design into it and that it's not always looking for that foam, that green foam showing where you add more pieces and it bulks up and bulks up so heavy at the bottom that gives you that real heavy, very static look. This has definitely a more sort of a emerging from like almost like a fountain kind of feel of growth spurting out rather than that it's weighted heavy at the bottom. And you also saw that I did not try to focalize with the big flowers in the middle, that it was balanced out from front to back side so that it made your eyes travel from one side to the other, not only side to side, but from front to back. And that's really important. The dimensionality creates the little world. If you haven't yet seen my quick tips video on how to create the chicken wire roll mechanics, you can find it linked in the description below or the card above. And if you found today's video helpful, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future tutorials.